everyone. Welcome to week four of the XAPI Spring Cohort 2023. We're going to delve into some case studies today. So it's going to be pretty exciting, but I do have some uh, information for you. You've probably seen this if you've attended before, but I'm going to go through it very quickly for anybody who might be new. We do have these weekly web sessions. We have an ongoing community in Slack. We have the XAPI X API projects that are the teams are formed in Slack and we have on demand resources. So in terms of the Slack community, if you haven't joined it, please do. Main is the main channel where we have announcements. Social is kind of like a water cooler. Please post anything that you'd like there. Recordings and resources will post there. The recordings and resources, they're also on xapicohort.com. And here, slash, or excuse me, hashtag team. Those are going to be the project team. So if you want to form a project team or join a project team, search for hashtag team at the top of your Slack channel of when you browse your channels, and you will see the teams that are available so that you can join them. And then we have hashtag discuss. Those are topical you know, uh, conversations. Do you want to talk about badging? Do you want to be a beginner and, and talk to other beginners? We have the XAPI projects. I'm hoping you really are doing that. We're going to start looking at people's projects by having people just give us a one or two sentence description of their project. And when they can do that uh, is right here. And we'll be doing it at the end of the sessions for the most part. And we can see if uh, how people are doing. Just give us a one to two sentence. If you're interested, please go ahead and you can uh, uh, contact me through Slack. That's probably the best way of getting a hold of me. I'm Karen Gleason, as you can see my name, hopefully. And just contact me through the Slack channel and say, hey, I'd love to spend one or two minutes talking about what we're working on for the spring cohort. You are more than welcome to use the tables here in AirMeet. They are available 24 seven, the whole length of the cohort. So if you're in a different time zone and wanna meet with your European colleagues, feel free, uh, go ahead, join a table. You know, watch your recordings. In AirMeet, they will be available nearly immediately after the session. You want to log into AirMeet or stay logged into AirMeet, go to view schedule, go to the particular uh, session you would like to view. Calls for proposals are now open for DevLearn 2023. Please, if you are hesitant, don't be. Reach out to our programming team and they'll help you submit your proposal. They're due this Friday, February 24th. Learning solutions, April 12th to the 14th. Look at those things we have for XAPI. Getting started with Megan Tornitz and BYOD, no code XAPI. Who would love to do that? So uh, make sure that the, you join us in Orlando. You can become a member to the guild and membership is free. I'm gonna drop links after I'm done talking for all these things so that you can take advantage of them. You have all kinds of things at the Guild. There's a lot of XAPI resources. We just came out with a research report. I'll put that in the link too. That brings us to today, XAPI uh, case studies. With us today, we have Rachel Arpin with OS, OSUCC and Julian Davis with Qualnet Technologies. They're gonna take us through some case studies. And so right now I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and Rachel's gonna get us kicked off. Thank you so much. It's great to see you all. Um, I For my uh, demonstration, I'm gonna be sharing a project that kind of was inspired by XAPI cohort and um, then kind of ran into a couple different things. Um, so I wanted to share both the project, the learning, and um, what the hopefully next steps are. Now, I will say this was my first ever attempt at XAPI, so be gentle. I'm learning. <laughs> um, so what I want to do is start off with this is what the project was about. So um, at Ohio State University, uh, Wexner Medical Center, um, we have an anti-racism action plan initiative. And the project team that I'm on, um, we wanted to create a virtual experience to allow people to explore topics related to racial justice. 
Um, so microaggressions, implicit bias. And so this, what we're looking at here is the first mock-up of the idea of you can step into a museum or a gallery and interact with different exhibits. And the goal really was to create that safe space for self-reflection, personal growth, and maybe inspire folks to take action. Um, so this was the project. I'm gonna send you a link um, at the end if you wanna explore it, because it is publicly available, um, but I'll just take you in it so you can see a little bit of what it was. So we built this in Articula Storyline. You go into the front entrance and there's this lobby. You can go to the art exhibit. You can go to the library, the Reflection Cafe. You can go to the map. Um, currently, the exhibits are microaggressions, implicit bias, and the art exhibit. And again, the, the whole point of this was so that people could click through this and explore it as if they were going to like different exhibits, different activities, and all of that. Um, and like I said, I'll send you a link to this if you are interested in exploring it later on. So from an XAPI cohort standpoint, um, I was inspired by this concept of you can understand how people are engaging with your experience click by click, um, as opposed to what I'm used to building in Storyline where it's did they complete it and did they pass? So knowing how people would be navigating through this experience was uh, revolutionary for me. Um, and I know it's kind of baseline use of XAPI, but again, it was my first uh, step into it. And so um, I, with the XAPI co cohort, I want to say it was spring or fall of 21, I started a project. And it was interesting because all of us on the project team, we were all beginners. None of us knew how to create XAPI statements. We were just super jazzed about the topic. And um, so through the cohort and being able to network with different folks, different project teams, different levels of experience, um, I was able to uh, figure out how to make this happen. Um, also had uh, work deadlines that I had to um, make sure that I followed through on. So sometimes, you know, maybe the, the project team itself and XAPA cohort has some uh, parameters or challenges that you can't get things done, but the network of people make it uh, possible for you to see through your dreams. So I was just kind of putting that out there. Um, for me, what made it possible is I'm a no coder. I don't know how to code for the life of me. So I found a tool that helped me to do it. And I'm not going to demonstrate, this is not me trying to promote the tool or anything, um, but using Zaply, um, I was able to create all of the XAPI statements behind the scenes. And so I'm just going to scroll through this. You can see for every possible clickable interaction in Arise, I have a data point that I'm collecting. I can know where they navigate. I can know what they liked or disliked, what they viewed. Um, I'm collecting different types of um, if, if they answer a question, what what did they answer in that? So all of this was stuff that because uh, Zaply, all I had to do was kind of follow their flow. It popped out a code. It popped out the XAPI statement code. I was then able to copy that and paste it into the tool that I was using to create the, the larger experience. Um, and so I was very excited about that part. I'll show you a little bit behind the scenes. So um, I'm a learning and development consultant at the Ohio State University um, at the James Cancer Hospital. And so um, a lot of what I build is inarticulate storyline. And I started doing this before I was aware of articulate being able to support XAPI statements. So this was all me using external tools, copying and pasting it in here. So um, looking at this kind of high level, this was the lobby that I showed you. Um, the entrance, the microaggression exhibit that we popped into real quick, different activities. So this is that big picture map of behind the scenes. And I was able to copy and paste the JavaScript from Zaply over into here and able to collect all of this data so far. Um, one thing that was really important for me was that I wanted people to feel safe in this space. Um, these are hard topics to think about, and sometimes you have to be able to feel like you can address those thoughts with yourself. And so with XAPI, the thought of someone having to enter an email address at the beginning to identify themselves as an actor, that was a, a concern for me. And so I was able to work with uh, Matt, uh, who 
helped me come up with an anonymous code. I did not do the coding. He did all of that work. But what that did is it assigned an anonymous user ID that I can then track that random ID that it would assign at the beginning and it would follow them through that instance of them going through. So until they closed down the window and came back into it, I could track that random user ID number throughout the course of the experience, see what was popular. Is there a trend in how folks are navigating through? So the anonymous code was very beneficial. And I see someone saying, yay, storyline. Um, I'm very excited about like being able to do this. And I want to learn even more about how storyline is using XAPI so that maybe I can bridge some of those gaps there. Um, so let me show you the data that I have, because um, in the end, this is what I was going for. I pulled this data on Tuesday. As of then, I had 10,000 statements of data, um, which is a lot to sift through. But one of the main things that I was interested in, the question that I was asking my data is, how are people navigating through this experience? So because of the way the statements worked, I could see the start of every interaction, the start of every experience with this arise and enter. So if I scroll down through this data, I can see this, the starting point of every time someone enters into the space. And then I can follow them through. Um, so in this case, this person, they came in, they looked at the map, they went to the microaggressions exhibit. There's this whole activity that they uh, followed through and they clicked through a bunch of the different things. Um, there were some reflection questions and <laughs> their, their responses were microaggressions. They're hurtful. Stop. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's still them getting in there and um, reflecting on what they've been learning. And so I was able to see them. This person spent most of the time in the microaggression exhibit and then spent a little bit of time over in the implicit bias. And I can even see here. This is a link to an external site, the Kirwin Institute that Ohio State um, partners with. Um, and that's when I lost them because now they went on to a different website. So that was good for me, good data collection for me to know. Um, so I can see the paths, I can see the activities. If I scroll down enough, one of the things that I want to improve on is I was trying to create opportunities to collect evaluation of the experience. So this person wonderfully went through the little survey and, and did the, the rating so I can see all the fives and that made me really happy. There were a couple threes up top, so I've got room to improve. Um, and and so being able to, to improve that so maybe I can get a better feel for what people think about the experience. Do they find it beneficial um, using data to improve there? So um, let's see, so I shared about the project, the cohort, Zapli, the data. So I think for me, some of the biggest challenges I would say, oh, zoom in, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a lot of um, eye crossing <laughs> worthy information. Um, but uh, for me, the biggest challenges I found is um, being able to visualize this data. Like now I wanna take all of this and I wanna make meaning out of it so I can share it with my stakeholders so that they can see what's valuable, but then also we can make changes. Um, you know, my organization's invested in us um, being able to create this kind of experience and even put money behind it. So being able to show them, here's how people are engaging with this. I want to be able to better visually demonstrate that. And then um, one thing that's interesting, and this kind of goes back to the articulate storyline uh, challenge for me, I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. So avert your eyes if that makes you dizzy. Um, when I created these statements within, so I use veracity learning for my LRS, there's this experienced XAPI statement that automatically pops out for everything. And it's always the experienced verb. And I haven't learned yet how to navigate that, to change that to something more meaningful for me. So for now, I remove it from my data filters when I take a glance at it. Um, but I know there's a way that I can figure out how to improve on that. So that's my 2.0 lessons that I want to learn. Um, so for this project, I know my next steps are I want to improve the content. So if there's any volunteers that want to work on this, let me know. Um, I want to improve the data visualization. So being able to take all of this and putting it in front of my stakeholders in a way that they can see the impact, they can see what's going on with Arise. Um, and then 
continuing to look at what data is meaningful to collect. I have a click for every single, <laughs> I have a data point for every single click within the experience, but is there even better data that I can collect that helps me show like where the meaningfulness is happening for the users and the visitors? So that's everything I wanted to demo. I think I did that a lot faster than I intended to. So I'm just gonna look at the chat real quick and see if there are any questions out here. I zoomed in on the spreadsheet. How do I analyze the data? So right now what I've been doing is, because um, I can see that this is the start of this um, interaction. I've been pulling like this user's I ID and then just kind of mapping it as a way of understanding how they navigated through the experience. And then when there are, um, I have this response um, data point as well, looking and seeing what are some of the inputs. Here's those threes that I was talking about in the um, in this section, there's room for improvement here. So being able to look at that data as well. I need to get better at that. I'm not a, um, well, I guess I shouldn't say that because I do like data and I do like analytics, but it's not necessarily my strong suit. Um, so there's, there's area to improve or um, people that really love to dig into that, that'd be lovely. Um, do I have XAPI statements on each? Storyline slide, yes. Um, so, I mean, I can even just click through here. So there's the opening, executing, articulate storyline so that it makes that connection to my LRS and um, it knows to communicate. And then for every single slide, for almost, I think for every single click, I have an individual execute JavaScript statement that was made. Did they click this? Did they click that? Did they click that? Um, it, it was it was a lot a lot of XAPA uh, coding in the background. Um, thankfully, I had the tool that did that. Um, how many people are on the team working with you? Are you doing all the development analysis visualization yourself? So, from a development standpoint, it was just me. Um, I, I'm on a team of two and a half people that that serves the the James uh, Cancer Hospital and the Med Center. So. Um, we're pretty small, so but from the content standpoint, I, I worked with subject matter experts on that. Um, so th they were able to provide what you see in here, and then I was on the development visualization side. As you can see, like if you get into the microaggressions, there's some stuff that it's kind of it could be more polished looking um, because I was pulling together our one dotto essentially. Um, what did the blue rose mean? Oh, the blue rose in the data. I'll scoot back to that real quickly. Um, this was the start of a, a new interaction. So this user, when they came in, this was a rise, they entered a rise, and then I could see their path through the rest of the uh, experience for Kelly. Um, just looking through and seeing if there's other questions that would be helpful. Um, so what did you visually, physically share with your stakeholders about the results of your data? Um, as of now, like we haven't had a follow up, um, presentation on this. Most of what we've been doing right now is just promoting the tool itself, promoting Arise as an experience that people can go through. Um, and so I'm still, and that's where for me, there's a gap of, I want to be able to show them like. Here's kind of how that path is of how people tend to navigate through. I was able to provide some feedback data of, yeah, we got some threes and we got some fives, and that's pretty standard graphs and charts. But this visualization of how people are going through it is a dream of mine of being able to show that. Um, can I share the, the anonymized data, meaning the anonymized coding? Brian, if you could clarify that for me, because if it's the coding, I have to ask the author if I can share that, because um, I didn't write that code. Um, but I will ask if that's what you mean. And do I have a specific framework or identifying the learning path or improve? Do you have a specific framework for identifying the learning path or improvise based on data responses? Scott, I'm not sure if I understand your question. 
if you could clarify that, maybe we can chat about that because I know that my time for demoing is almost done. Oh, uh, Brian, not the coding, the data on the screen. Yeah, so this user um, over here, this was the random anonymized username. So when they go into the space, instead of being asked for their email address, um, the system automatically generates this anonymous user ID, and then it follows them through the path. Um, so that means I know that this user is connected to all of this data because there are a couple times like if people are hitting it at the same time i'll have different user data is kind of mishmashed in with each other that's been really fun to parse through um but it's exciting because it means there's a lot of people getting in there um all right i'm gonna i think that's my time as far as demoing um thank you for letting me uh share this with you this was again my first xapi project in partnership with the cohort and a lot of amazing folks um, so thanks for letting me share this. And it's just kind of one of those messages where like, if I can do XAPI, I know anyone can do XAPI. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. That was absolutely wonderful. A lot of people were really, oh, look, this is how you do it. That's so exciting. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Julian Davis, who's going to give us another case study. And we do have a treat at the very end. We do have someone who is going to update us on their current project they're working on for cohort we secured somebody so we're going to take a minute or two towards the end and they're going to talk about it so now i'm going to turn things over to julian great thanks karen and good morning everyone from a very um fresh morning here in brisbane australia for anyone else who's up at this um, time of the morning so what i want to talk about today is um a particular tool that we've been working on that was originally inspired by something that happened out of the xapi cohort and that was to do with um uh, video and video assessment. So I'm going to see how we can go here from a um, sharing screen perspective. So bear with me for a second. So, uh, okay. So I, I actually cannot now see my screen. Um, so I'm hoping that we can see, you can see what I'm seeing. Um, I'm actually going to. We did see it for a moment. Just, okay, I'm just gonna go back and, and, and just go through the slides because I can't see my other screen. So bear with me for a second, thank you. Okay, so we can we can see this one. So um, we are seeing your we're seeing your presentation, but we're seeing it from the presenter view, not the presentation view. So we see these thumbnails on the side. Now we see it. Thank you. Okay. No, it, great. Okay, it keeps going back and forth. Okay, there we go. We're back now. Right. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look um, at what it is that the problem that I was trying to solve, and how does XAPI solve it. How does it work? And then what we can do next. So the biggest problem that we were trying to solve is remote assessment. So being in a, uh, a post-COVID world, there was a lot of things that were happening from how do you assess people or is even checklist people or even check that they're doing something correctly. Um, so we looked at how XAPI could actually um, help in this area. And the reason I wanted to do it was purely because of interoperability. So XAPI being decentralized from everything um, is, a, is a brilliant way to interoperate, if that's the right word, the data. Um, and to do that, we used XAPI extensions and profiles. So I'm not sure whether anybody is familiar yet with extensions and profiles, but I'm going to give a very, very, very quick overview on, on what they are. Um, so uh, as a recap on XAPI and the way that people do things, um, I have my own analogy of what it is, and it's based on someone did something. Um, so in this particular instance, John played an induction video, which is broken down into active urban activity. And I find that in my 
years of doing XAPI, this has been the easiest way for me to describe how XAPI works. Um, and to, to steal Megan's um, words, it's a vocabulary. So we also need to store the data. So a learning record store can actually store data from anywhere. And this is what's known as an activity provider. So I don't know if you've ever heard that terminology before. However, an activity provider from um, xapi.com is basically anything that can feed a, a learning record store with xapi. So looking uh, back at what Rachel did, her, her um, storyline file is an activity provider. Um, you can have anything. You can have, you can have PDFs. You can have a simulator, um, basic HTML, pretty much anything that can, can connect to a learning record store and send XAPI is an activity provider. So what we're looking at doing from an activity provider point of view is we're validating a video or a task. So the, this tool, which is known as Remote Reviewer, is actually taking, um, it's becoming an activity provider. So it will start sending XAPI in a particular way. So the way the tool works is it creates a task. Uh, it gets sent to the person that has to do the task. They upload a video and then it's reviewed by an assessor. So it's quite a simple process. But this is where XAPI comes in, and this is where the power of XAPI comes in. So we actually don't use a lot of verbs when it comes down to using uh, an assessment. I think there's only about seven or eight verbs that we actually use. Um, and, and this is also, this comes back to how flexible XAPI is. So we have an initialize, so we actually want to know when something has started. Because we're working with a video, we're looking at the played, seeked, and paused, which is quite important for being able to capture comments when someone wants to um, assess or, or, or pause a video and actually capture some comments on what they actually did. So we have additional ones, which is checked, which I'll explain shortly. We've got the checklist that come in there, commented and completed. So these eight verbs all we use for the entire application, which is not much when you start thinking about it. But what you do use is we're introducing a video profile. So for those that haven't used a profile before, what a profile is, is um, there is a link there and uh, I can share the link or we can send this out as a PDF with the link where you can actually go to the XAPI profile server and have a look at the verbs that have been used for a particular video. And the concept of this is that any reporting tool knows what the specifications of XAPI is and knows what the verbs and extensions are for video profile to be able to report on it. So conceptually, it's setting the standard for, for reporting and using XAPI grouped together to form a profile, which can be quite powerful. Um, and if you go along to the uh, the profile server, you'll find that there's quite a number of them out there that have already been created. So it's very, it's, it's worth having a look at what a profile what a profile is and how it can help you. Um, you, you, you may find that you don't need to reinvent the wheel because it's already out there, which was quite cool. Um, so I don't know if you can if you can see that, um, but this is, I'm actually going to go into uh, and do a very, very quick demo time pending on, uh, on what this actually looks like. So I'm using Veracity as the LRS, but the thing about the whole application is you can use any LRS you want. Um, the LRS has to conform to the XAPI specification. So therefore everything is going to talk seamlessly. So if you have a look in, in this extension, you can see at the top, that top and the bottom that it's defining that it's a video so this is what this is what part of the profile is so it defines it's a video and if you have a look at the extensions you'll some things there uh if you've ever worked with video will look um familiar so it's actually picking up the frame rate it's picking up for want of a better term the metadata of what what happening for that video um so that can all be pulled out of so I'm using um, player.js, which gives me a video object in JavaScript that I can then pull all this information out of and package it up into XAPI and send it off 
um, to the LRS. Now, because, and this is something that I love about XAPI, because it is JSON, it is a standard JSON format, you can actually create your own extensions. So in this instance, you'll see at the top that I have a particular extension um, ID, and then underneath it, I can put as much information under there in JSON format as I want. So this can be, this can be defined as metadata around the actual task that the person is creating. You can see there that it, 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 there's, a, there's some HTML in there in the, in the instructions, there's descriptions, um, there's other useful information in there that um, can be used linked back to remote reviewer as well. And it's all about the results. So um, we all know that in XAPI, there is a results um, portion of it. So this part actually captures um, the, the, the time that the particular result, the, this particular pause was captured at, um, how far they have progressed through the video. So these are all in um, minutes and seconds based on the length of the video. And then every segment that has been played to date uh, in the video. So it, it's quite powerful data that you can get. Um, and then again, you can see down the bottom that there's the, the, um, the object and the object type, which, and what I've done for the ID, uh, because it needs to be unique and it links it all through, I just simply use the YouTube video. So every, every video has a unique URL, which consequently makes it a unique ID. Um, so I'm going to give you a very, very quick demo. So pardon me while I just shift from the, the PowerPoint slide to uh, the demo and uh, and just, just to give you an idea of how the data is captured um, and then we'll actually deep dive into the data a little bit. I do see some questions there. I shall get to the questions in just a minute. I these people. Okay, so this is inside the application. Uh, and this is my son, so he's okay for me to actually talk about this. I just did see a question there about 508 compliant, and I'm guessing that that's a... Um, a US thing, and I'd be interested to have to have a look at that because that's something that I'm not familiar with. Um, so what I have here is this is my son. I just asked him to go and take uh, a video of him working on uh, whatever he does. He's a cabinet maker, so he's gone ahead and uh, okay, thank you, um, Megan. I'll have a look at that. So if I if I'm pausing it, you can see that he he's just working through something. Um, I'm hoping that the video is playing for you guys as well. Um, if I uh, pause the video, this actually now allows me to put a comment in against uh, this particular part of the video. So, um, so I can say here, excuse the spelling. No, I've cancelled that. I'll... Uh, Pause that and say save. And then it, then it continues on its way. But what it's actually done is it's captured the comment down here, which would then allow me if I wanted to, so I can actually jump on that and it will jump back to the actual point in the video of where it is. Um, I've also got a series of checklists here. So I can say that he is, so he's not wearing a, a, a dust mask. I can put a comment in there if I want to. Um, he is wearing gloves. I can put a comment in there if I want to, and, and so on and so on. Um, so uh, Scott's just asked a question. Did I need to um, any JavaScript code from YouTube? No, using the player function, the player JS, it did it all for me. And then I just used the player object to be able to pull the information out of uh, of the video object. Um, there is also the ability for me to complete this task to say whether they've actually completed the task or not. Um, so this is basically uh, a high level view of what the, the what the interface is. What I did want to show you was 
what happens in the learning record store. So I'm just going to refresh our learning record store. So if anyone's worked with Veracity before, you would be very familiar with this. And here you can start to see the name of this particular task was called Correct Sanding Techniques. And here we can see that we've checked, paused, played, checked, seeked. So everything that actually happened on the video has been captured. This, uh, and like I said, this came out of the uh, a conversation that was had a couple of years ago um, about how we capture uh, from a video profile. Um, so we, we understand whether users or our learners are skipping a video or, or, or jumping straight to the end of a video or how many times they're pausing and playing and what time it was to be able to get some more granular data out of what our learners are looking at from a video perspective. Uh, and we just took it to the next level. So we said, well, if we do that, why can't we comment on that particular uh, a part of the video? Um, so if I had a look at the uh, commented one here, I'm hoping it works. We can see here that there's, they're the extensions that I was talking about. There's obviously an error in my code because if anyone knows JavaScript, NAN is not a number. Um, and there is our object as well set, saying what it actually is, that it is actually, in fact, a video. Um, the agent up here is uh, the person who's actually making, who's doing the review. So this allows us then to link it back to the person um, to, to generate reports etc within uh, our remote reviewer tool to be able to see who actually did it. Um, how much am I going for time? Um, if I the other thing that this this one does very very well uh, as in veracity is because I am using the correct profile this is what I was talking about earlier by using the correct video profile your tools um, that you're using will uh, correspond will work because of that. So I've not done anything to this dashboard at all. Uh, but if I scroll down to here, I can actually start to see um, a video. This is what they call a video histogram of what the video uh, is doing. So in if I go for that particular uh, XAPI statement, if I go back to my dashboard, And go back to activity overview. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not doing anything. Let's go. So um, what I'm trying to bring up is I'm trying to bring up the actual histogram of where everything comes through. That's not quite what I wanted. <laughs> um, to my knowledge, and if anyone else can, I don't know, if anyone else has had exposure to other LRSs that do video histogram, I'll be interested to test this on that as well. Now, do we have any, no questions? <laughs> We go back to our demo dashboard, and here we can see a demo. Well, this was a demo that I did with Veracity the other day that we can actually see um, that, that, that we are capturing um, video data. So that that conceptually is it. Um, I'm just going to go through and have a look at some of the questions. Uh, I haven't seen any accessibility proofs. So Evan had a question, is this the learner leaving a comment that is basically a note for their own reference and or responding? No. So this, what I was actually, and it was rushed, so I do apologize, but what it is, is this is the person that's actually doing the review of the task. So in this instance, my son was doing a sanding. We were assessing him to make sure that he was completing it. So I would be the assessor. Um, and the, the beauty of this is, is the assessor could be on one side of the country and the student could be on the other side of the country. So 
uh, that that's where the, the power comes in. And if it is a college, uh, what we call over here a TAFE, so technical and further education, then um, you could have your own learning record store that captures that data. So we, as the application, does not actually capture it. So that's, uh, that's a very, very quick, very, very quick introduction to how we used profiles and extensions uh, within a particular application. Thank you so much, Julian. That was a really quick and, and wonderful presentation <laughs> for that use case. I liked it. I liked it. I think Thank a lot you. of people Thank did. You. It gave a lot of people some things to look at and uh, talk about. I have brought to the stage Michelle McCrory. She's working on a project. We've given her a couple minutes. Michelle, tell us what you're working on for the spring cohort. Okay, so uh, uh, we have uh, members that are with a major insurance company and they use uh you know storyline and rise and the articulate suite so rise is notorious for not giving out very good data you know there's a lot of tweaks you have to do and so our our team was formed because we like to be able to use rise to collect some x api data but there's going to have to be a lot of things that we're going to have to figure out in order for that to happen and at the end, we would like to present what we find to Articulate to see if perhaps this could be something that they could uh, improve their RISE courses with. And we also have a team member that's working on a, a, a product to be able to insert into RISE to gather uh, X API data. And so our, um, our target is to uh, obtain better statements through RISE with changes to the uh, X API. Okay, so we want to know who we are, uh, who's taking the test, um, the endpoint for the data, and the credentials. Those are three things that they've identified that aren't very good for us. Um, we've published a sample RISE course with several um, uh, blocks that are actually uh, an example of each thing that RISE offers so that we can gather data from each interaction. Like we have the flashcards, we have the uh, you know bullet points where you can click on each one, um, the check boxes, just everything. Um, so we've uploaded our course to uh, something called Swarm Cloud, and we're using Watershed as our LRS. And the LRS is, for those of you that are new like me, it's a learning record store. So a learning record store, you don't actually uh, take the course. It doesn't hold the course, it just holds the data. And the learning management system holds the course. So the learning management system has to send the data to a learning record store. And that is the part that our team is trying to figure out. Right now we have two workflows. We have uh, instructional designers, uh, you know, like, like me, we're trying to get better data, but we don't really know about the coding and all that. And then we have another workflow with people that are uh, targeted for JavaScript people. And one of our members is, is heading that team. He's trying to, his name's Brian. Brian, he's trying to come up with a product that you can actually, a wrapper you can actually get so that you can use it with Rise to obtain these statements. So if, you know, Rise doesn't improve, we still have, we'll still have an option. Together for that. So, y'all have any questions? Or? Ah, have to unmute myself there and a little too fast. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Um, and if you're, I'm not mistaken, you are Team Dash Rise, correct? Oh yes, I forgot to say my team. Okay, yes. That's okay. That's all yeah. right. So I've team gone Rise. ahead of Team Rise. There you go. So yes. it's in there. And uh, so you can go and join that team in the Slack channel as well as other uh, teams. And we're going to also have this as kind of a week to week component where we're going to see about the teams and get a little update as to what you're working on. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to show our PowerPoint here and go right there. And today we had Rachel, we had Julian, they gave us great case studies. Thank you so much, the both of you. 
we really appreciated that. And um, in terms of our uh, our our updates, I'll post something in Slack. I would like to get some of your updates by Wednesday and see if there's anybody who would like to share one or two minutes on your project, just like Michelle did. It gives us an opportunity to learn what other people are doing and maybe see where we can fit in. So I, I know we're out of time. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank Rachel, Julian. I want to thank Michelle. It, it was a last minute, it was really at the last minute when she came on. So thank you so much for doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and I will be at a table. I know a couple of you had some questions, so I'm going to close things out and you have a great rest of your day.